Asato ma sat gamaya Tamaso ma jutir gamaya Mrityur ma amritam gamaya Om shanti 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 Today's we're going to take you on headlong <laughs> through little little understanding little little story you look we all are searching 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 and great masters have found the answer but we are not looking into it we are going ahead and copying the western people and the western people are wanting to learn about our eastern vedanta and the upanishads there is a very famous writer from British Columbia University, Evan Thompson. Waking, dreaming, being. You know, what we are dealing with the Vedanta for a couple of years now, sincerely. We are getting into the world which has been, by the force of the westernized education system, has been taken away from us. And we have been kept into the blind. And Lord McCall made a great strategy in 1832. He came down to India, sent by then Queen Victoria. Go down to India and tell me why is it we can't rule India. Recollect history. 326 BC, Alexander the Great came and attacked India. And he won. India lost. Boris lost. But if you go to Google and Wikipedia, you find in Google the answer, Alexander the Great, after winning, within a few weeks, ran away back from India. Why should he do that? Look, the history. Thereafter, that was 326 BC. Thereafter came the Mughal Brigade. Tamil Long, Genghis Khan, Baba, Rakhbar, Human, Aurangzeb. That's AD. That was BC. And some of them looted us, our wealth, and went away. Some of them stayed on, like Akbar and Shah Jahan and Aurangzeb, and ruled us. Think, came the Portuguese, the Zoroastrians, came the French, 16th century. 1650 British made the East India Company in the pretext of the trading wanted to rule India. In 1832, Queen Victoria said, Lord McCall, go and tell me, why is it I can't rule India? My sun does not set, the sun does not set in my horizon. That means the kingdom was so big. When the sun is setting in one side, her kingdom is still on the other side where the sun is rising. I want India. India was being looted by the British. In 1835, Lord McCall went back and gave a presentation in 2nd of February to the Queen Victoria, Her Majesty, saying, we cannot rule India. She said, what? But you are bringing so much of wealth from there. He said, yes, we can bring wealth. But that is, by gunpoint, we can rob them, rob them, but not rule them. Because their character is so strong. People like Shankaracharya has created such people. Shankaracharya is about 1500 years ago. Think. That rule of Shankaracharya was continuing and this is the 18th century just about similar time so even Thompson is saying that we are doing this consciousness study David Chalmers in New York University even Thompson is British Columbia 
and David Chalmers is New York University, NYU. Mind Brain Consciousness Unit, studying consciousness. Harvard School of Divinity, Google them all, you should do a little research. Find out how rich we are with our heritage, but you and I have chosen not to study. And oh, again Vedanta, oh, again Upanishad. Hey, you all are blessed. We are all blessed to have this one drop of Vedanta. Because the fact Vedanta claims is written down that if you are being introduced to Vedanta, you have done great work pure pious work in your life to have been introduced to it. Embrace it. Learn a little bit. Spend a little time. Shravanam. Listen. Reflect on it. Mananam. Think. Ask questions. Question. Question. Challenge it. And then Nididhyasanam. Hold on to that. What you challenge and found answer and reflect upon it. Be still with that message. Just watch how the life changes. And you get connected to the consciousness. What is consciousness? This is what we are going to headlong dwell into now. Today I am going to give you a few points from even Thompson is stating that it is not true. In the Western world, consciousness study has just started 20, 20, 30 years. Not more than 30 between 30 and 30 years. Even Thompson says, it is not true in this waking, dreaming being. I'll show you the book. I have it. <laughs> He's saying it more than 5,000 years ago in India in the study of Upanishad. Dara Shikho, you know Aurangzeb, Shah Jahan, Dara Shikho. He had translated to Persian and called Upani Khat. He was very fond of our Indian culture and religion. As a Persian, he converted into Persian, Upani Khat. Persia and India are very close. And from there, it went on to the Germany through Max Muller and it continued thereafter. The study in the Western world. Now, these Upanishads are many. In brief right now, and we'll deal with a little more. There is an Upanishad called Muktika Upanishad, which gives you a list of 108. Out of which, 11 Upanishads called Mukhya Upanishads, declared by Shankaracharya and followers. And more or less India concerns Bharat today concentrated on these 11 Upanishads. Out of which, I'm going to cover and start covering on Mandukya Upanishad with the blessings of our Gurudev, Bahaktar Babaji, Sri Sri Krishna, Divine Mother, with our Gurudev Paramahansa Yogananda, Sri Sri Uteshwar Giri Lahiri Mahasai, and with the pranams to our Swami Vivekananda, Holy Mother Sharada and Paramahamsa Ramakrishna. We are going to dwell into it with that blessing of the Divine Mother, we will understand it. The beauty is that this Upanishad, Mandakya Upanishad is so small. You know, there are only 12 Tutras. It can be covered in one A4 size sheet. That small it is. It is the smallest Upanishad. And yet, it is called by the Bengali Rishis and Vivekananda and all. They used to call it Dhani Lanka. Those of you Bengali, you know what does it mean. Dhani Lanka is so tiny and it's extremely spicy. <laughs> I made the mistake once. I remember I had cut one thin, thin slice. Like, you know, you do in an uh, biology, zoology experiments and make a slide and I read a thin slide and I tasted it. Oh, it was for next half an hour, 45 minutes I kept drinking water and sugar and curd to take away that. It's that strong. Nature's creation. <laughs> this 
Mandakya Upanishad is called Thani Lanka. You know, this Mandakya Upanishad 12th Sutra, the first part is talking about that you don't have to, by the dualistic religion, wait. Why can't I see God? We ask this question no, to our elders, to our pandit. And they say, you will. If you do good work, you will go to heaven. When will you see God? In heaven. But that is, if I can't see God, I cannot come back and challenge the pandit. When? After death. Time bound, place bound. The beauty of Advaita is Advaita is saying right now. Mandakya Upanishad said right now. And what experience? Mandakya is not talking about you and I have to have some mystical experiences. Some go into trance and get into Samadhi. Then you will see that, see that light and see that, you know, divine. You will also see them as we practicing through our Kriya Yoga. Through our bhakti, through our work for good for the people, karma and jnana yoga, understanding the Vedanta. We will experience those mystical too. Many of you are doing it already. But it doesn't have to be that. Mandakya says in the first part, in the second part, what it talks about, I'll just touch upon. In the first part, it says, you are existing. You don't have to wait for heaven. And you are there as a waking person right now, like you and me. Waking experience. And then we have the second called dream state or sleep, dream, sleep state. Dream and sleep. And the third is the deep sleep state. Three states. Mandakya Upanishad is talking about those three states in the first chapter. And then it goes on to say the fourth is called Turiya. We have done a little bit about it, touched upon it. This Turiya is the term, Turiya means fourth, was started out by Gaurapada. Gaurapada is Govindapada Guru. And Govinda Pada Shankaracharya Guru. So Shankaracharya Guru's Guru wrote on this 12th Tutra in Mandaka Karika 123 slokas. Just this 12. It's such powerful. In which he goes ahead and explains Mandaka Upanishad's power. You know, once, a cute story, cute story. Hanumanji asked Rama, Hey Ram, how can I attain Mukti? Hanumanji was told by Rama, Mandakya ekame balam, mumukshatte vimuktaye. Mandakya ekame be alam mumukshaye bimuktaye. Mandakya alone is good enough to give you mukti. Anumanji went and asked, went ahead and further asked, supposing I don't get mukti, he had doubts. Rama said, then you go ahead for as per mukti ka Upanishad, study all 108. <laughs> now you and I are in modern time. We don't have time. So we need to study Mandakya Upanishad, understand it thoroughly. And the second part of it is talking about that only one, that Om. How can we utilize that powerful Om, Omkar, and attain Mukti? What is Mukti? End of suffering. Fulfillment of all desires. And this is the promise of Vedanta. That if you understand Vedanta and practice. Shavaram, Maranam, Nitidyasaram. There will be fulfillment of all desires. 
departure of all sickness, all poverty, all illness, and no suffering, end of all suffering. And this is what Buddha found out from the same thing, in which, very simple, the basics of these messages in I am Atman Brahman, in Mandaka Upanishad is talking about, I am the Brahman. Now, briefly, recollect our last statements where we had talked about Swayam Atman Chatushta. This is the message of the Mandakya coming out again, going back to what we had studied. If you recollect from the Chandakya Upanishad, the father Uddalaka, Aruni was his, another real name was Aruni, was called Uddalaka, asking Shwetaki to after he comes back with a lot of learning, very proud. Have you learned that by which you have learned and you can learn everything? And notice this is what we are trying to do. What is that? Slight deviation, but I'm just coming back. He's already saying that knowing one thing, you can know everything. <laughs> Uddalaka is asking Shweta Ketu, do you know that? And he says now, and he, Shwetakata went on to become a great monk, great rishi in India. So Uddalaka nine times in Chandakya Upanishad explains to him. He's saying, see, if you know gold, you know all the gold ornaments. They can have different shape, different color, different stones fitment into it, but you know it's gold. By knowing clay, you know all the clay parts. They may be of different color, different shape, different size, different usage, but you know it's a clay pot. By knowing fire, you know all types of fire because it is fire. Just like that, knowing one thing. And similarly, he says, this is what Mandakya Upanishad is talking about. It's the fourth, the Turiya, in which if you understand that, recollect Asanga Aham, Asanga Aham, Asanga Aham. Puna, 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 Puna. We do this in our meditation, no? Asanga Aham. I am detached, I am detached. Satchidananda Rupoham Ahameva Avkaya. I am the Sat, the existence, Chit, the consciousness, Ananda. And that's the definition of Brahman, Daitariya Upanishad. Lot of names of Upanishad, but very simple now. It should be very familiar. Even a monkey like me is becoming familiar. <laughs> you all are very intelligent. And Ahameva, this is who I am, beyond Avkaya, beyond deterioration, beyond aging. I am not. The body is aging. Mind is changing. But I have remained from tiny child that I is I notice the changes of my thinking process analysis process, knowledge process, learning process, and desire process. I have remained the same, but then all those things are changing. That's the mind. I am detached, but I am the one, the perfect one. Existence, absolute, sat, chit, Consciousness, bliss, absolute. I'm immortal, the perfect one. Ahameva, avkya, without decay, without change. And he goes on to say, you can experience the world only when you are conscious. If I am in Koba, I the world vanishes for me. Understand how simple the Advaita is making our journey. How simple. If I am unconscious, I can't see the world, I cannot hear, I cannot see, I cannot do anything. And if I don't have the consciousness, I do not realize this table exists, this clock exists, I exist. Vedanta saying, change the thinking, 
It is not I exist, the computer exists, the table exists. Existence is computer, existence is me, is body, existence is the mind, existence is the table. And this is what it's saying. That existence can be experienced by that consciousness, that awareness. And this is what we are practicing with our Vedanta meditation, mindfulness meditation. That awareness, coolness at the nostril, warmth at the nostril. And then get back. What does it say? Tasya bhata sarvam idam vivati. By glowing of that light, you see the whole world. That consciousness is the light. Whole world comes into vision. That shining, everything is shining by its light. Sarvam idam vivati. Das sameva vantam anubhati sarvam. Das sivata sarvam idam vivati. Sameva vantam. Once you shine, anubhati sarvam. You understand, realize everything. Tasya bhata, when that you are shining, sarva vidam vivati. Whole world comes into. Little, little Sanskrit, understand. Meanings are very simple. All of you have done a little bit of shining. That shining, that consciousness shining, everything is shining. By its light, everything is shining. I want you to end with one little story. You know, once a king was taking with his minister for a walk around him and he was going through a little nice farm and he saw the farmer with his wife and two kids they're in such joy laughter happiness and hugging joy eating playing around no stress no suffering king said minister how come I have apparently everything, but I have so much of suffering. The minister said, Maharaj, they don't have the fever called 99 gold. Maharaj said, what is 99 gold? He said, I will show you. Give me a few months. Maharaj said, okay. He said, I want you to place the minister asked the king. 99 gold coined in a bag and we want to place it in front of the farmer's house. He said, what will happen? He said, place it and see. He places 99 gold coin in front of the farmer's. Next day morning when the farmer opened, he sees the bag, he opens it and he said, my God, so much show I've never seen in my life. And he starts counting. One, two, three, 99? Something is wrong, can't be. Again, count one, two, three, four, five, eight, ninety-nine. It can't be. How can it be? Why ninety-nine? He asked his wife, something is wrong. Can you just count it? She also counted. Ninety-nine. Again counts it ninety-nine. They asked the son, you counted, you know how to count. He also count ninety-nine. Father said, Listen, take care of those ninety-nine. I'm gonna work hard and make it hundred. He starts sweating and working at 99 to make it 100 gold. Searching for that one gold. Wife says, what a nut are you? Why are you using those gold coins and have good fun? Make the house change, buy something, shopping. He said, no, no, no. We must first make it 100. Husband is working away and wife is saying, what a nut. The wife does. One day he takes quietly two gold coins and goes for shopping and comes back. Husband suddenly comes and says, what are all this? Oh, you are not doing it. You don't want to accompany me. So I went and just busted up a little bit of two coins. He said, what? How can you? And they started fighting and pushing. How can you do that? I'm working my life out to get that gold coin. You've heard all this. You know about it. And strife, struggle, fight, separation. You are to blame. You are to blame. Starts off. The king comes with the minister, says, Come, I'll show you what is gold 99. And he shows them. And they were fighting, quarreling, 
no cleanliness, the joy, laughter is gone. Dear devotee, this is what we are doing. We are searching end of suffering. We are suffering perfect health, perfect peace of mind. But we don't want to learn Vedanta. We don't want to learn Upanishad. And we are searching for that gold, searching for that money. Having money is not a problem. But money having you is the problem. This is how it is happening. The money having you. And running away our happiness and joy. And this money is so important to us. Joy is vanished. With that end, let us finish today. I pray to the Supreme Divine Mother to awaken that essence of the desire of craving. Vakulata. Paramahamsa Ramakrishna used to say Vakulata. Earning. Yearning to learn. Me generate within us. No more and more we be blessed by Mother Saraswati. Divine Mother Durga, Saraswati, Lakshmi, Kartikya. Kartikya gives you courage, Vairag and love for Mother. Ganesha gives you Pragna, wisdom. And small mouth talks very little. Or huge ear listens. Listening, Shravanam, <laughs> Mananam and Nidityasanam. May we be blessed to take up the journey. Jai Guru.